Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the Genomics Bootcamp, back again with another video on linkage disequilibrium. This is the first part of the finishing to when we are actually computing the linkage disequilibrium, this time by hand. I believe this is an interesting piece of knowledge, so it's worthwhile to look at. So what we know so far, so LD characterizes the degree of relationship between two loci as always, and R square is the commonly used measure of the LD computed with the equation below. And here we are at the first of the two examples I will show you today. The first one is the very basic one, and actually you might recall this two by two table from the previous videos. When we look at the R square equation, it is clear what we need to compute, and that is the proportion of A, proportion of B, and the proportion of the joint occurrence of A and B. Therefore, we are interested what is in this segment or cell in, in this other one for the B and the joint occurrence of A and B together. Because we are speaking about proportions, we are need to divide them with the sum of all alleles. So this is already how we compute the proportions. So the proportion of A is the 5 divided by 10, so 0 0.5 in this case. Proportion of the B allele is a 6 divided by 10, so 0 0.6, and the joint occurrence is 4 divided by 10, 0 0.4. When we have our usual equation, we basically have all the unknowns, so the proportion of AB and AB, and we put them in, and after the computation, we get the LD, between these two loci A and B as 0 0.167. So after this warm-up example, I show you the real deal. That is this LD calculation exercise that was shown by Professor Henner Simianer at the Livestock Conservation Genomics Data Tools and Trends Workshop back in 2012 in Pag Island, Croatia. I really like this example because it puts the LD calculation into context of haplotypes and all the allele combination using SNPs. So first I give you the initial example how it was given back in 2012. Then I give you the breakdown of the example and you will have the chance to stop the video and do the computations yourself. And after that, you can look up the solution in this video. So the exercise looks like this. So we have the, our genome here and we have a four SNPs. First one is an AT SNP, second one a CG SNP, third one is also a CG SNP and the fourth is an AT SNP. We have also our population and these are already the haplotypes where this haplotype for our genome or part of the genome appears 17 times this other one 14 times, 3 times, 3 times, 2 times, and this haplotypes appears just one time in the population. The exercise is to calculate the LD between all pairs of loci. Now in this video I will show you how to compute LD between locus 1 and 2 in detail, then I will show you the solutions for the two other pairs of loci and the last three you can follow up yourselves if you want. So to give you a bit of a heads up information, I list here the loci that you need to compute the proportions for. So for a locus one is the A, the locus two is a C, locus three is also a C, and locus four is an A. You need to compute it for these alleles specifically because these are the major alleles for these loci. So if you count them up, so the A is the major allele for locus 1, uh, the C is for locus 2, the C is also for locus 3, and the A for locus 4. And obviously then you need to compute the joint occurrences between the two loci that you are following up and you want to compute LD for. So if you actually have all these proportions, you can compute the LD between all pairs or actually from for pairs 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4, as we will list it in this video. And putting these proportions into the well-known equation, then you get the R square value for that pair of loci. Now, if you want to go ahead and do the calculations yourself or with pen and paper, then this is the moment to pause the video 
and uh, well, just go ahead with the computations. And after you are done, or at least you are done with the locus, for example, locus one, two, then to resume the video and see if you have done well or if there is something to be corrected. Okay, so we are continuing with the solution in three, two, one, now. Actually, what needs to be done is pretty similar to the previous uh, smaller case, but in this case, you need to build up the two by two table yourself. So here we have a locus one with an AT snip, a locus two with a CG snip. And because we told that the A is the actual major locus, then you actually need to count them up. So basically you need to fill up this spot in the two by two table for the locus two, the C is the major locus. So you need to fill up this spot on the two by two table. And of course, their joint occurrence as well. So how to do that? Of course, we will use the actual haplotype numbers as they are given in the exercise. Actually, right now we are looking at locus one and locus two. So basically these two columns are interesting for us. So we can actually hide the other ones so that they don't bother us too much. Now, perhaps the first thing you might consider is that, well, we need to calculate the proportions. So we basically need to know how many haplotypes are there total. So basically we add up 17 plus 14 plus three plus three plus two plus one. And we, when we do that, we actually arrive to number 40. So this is the total number of haplotypes. Now for locus one, we need to count how many times the allele A appears. So in this haplotype, it, there is an A, so it's 17 times, so it's 17. Here in the locus one is a T, so there it is, we don't count this. Also, there is an A here, an A here, here. There is a T here, so we don't count this, and the A here. So basically we have a 17 plus three plus three plus one. That is together 24. Following the same logic for locus two, in this case, we count the C allele. So here we have a C, so we count this. Here we have a G, so we don't count this. Count this, this, and this. So everywhere where is a C. So there is a 17 plus three plus three plus two and that is together 25. The last thing we need to find out that how many times the A and C appear together. So here the A, C appear together so that we count this. We don't count this, but also A, C here, A, C here. Here, also, although there is a C, but there is not an A, so we don't count this part. And also here is an A, but there is a G here. So it's, it's not an AC combination. So also we don't count this. So basically we count this 17, this three and this three, which is together 23. And because we are actually interested in proportions rather than the numbers themselves. So we divide the, for the locus one, the proportion of A is 24 divided by 40, that is 0 0.6. And then for locus two, the proportion of C is 25 divided by 40, that is 0 0.625. And the joint occurrence the same way, so the 23 divided by 40, and that is this number, 0 0.575. So with this, we already have everything. So we have the proportion of A, proportion of C, and the joint occurrence. So we have our beautiful equation here. So this is the joint occurrence and this would be the proportion of A and proportion of C. So we put them in into the equation itself and then we end up with an LD between locus one and locus two as 0 0.711. So this is the LD between these two loci. On this slide, I give you all the results for the other loci. So locus one, two, three, and four and the joint occurrences of these three pairs. And if we fill them in into the equation, the well-known equation, then we end up with, well, this is just a repetition from before. And then there is the LD between lo locus one, three and the LD between locus one and four. So this is basically it. This is how you compute LD by hand. So for the summary, an example of the LD computation by hand was shown, which is not a very widespread piece of knowledge. So I argue that is really good to have it in your inventory. But on the other hand, we also have to note that this manual mode of computation is not very effective. 
For that, we need to use software solutions that are able to handle computations of LD between thousands and hundreds of thousands of loci. And such computations will be shown in the next video. For today, I thank you for your time and have a very nice rest of the day.